Hey, how's it going guys? Jack, Matt, McAllister, and Zach. Once again, we're on a journey. We're at Best Buy this time. We're gonna go get the top five most purchased keyboards at Best Buy. Are they gonna be any good? Are they gonna be from like all the main like basic brands like Razer, Corsair? Probably, but we're gonna go test them right now by going in and buying them. But first, they were from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar, your one-stop shop for all your storage needs. Today, we are looking at the Hades RGB RAM kit featuring absolutely beautiful RGB, capacities up to 32 gigabytes, and super fast 3600 megahertz speed that is rock solid stable, making it perfect for your next Intel or AMD gaming rig. But don't forget that Lexar has SSDs as well, like the NM620, with read speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3000 megabytes per second, and capacities of 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, and 1 terabyte. If you're looking to build a new PC or just upgrade your rig, then definitely consider the Hades memory and NM620 SSD by checking the link down below a special thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring today's video so you said five not ten right we're doing ten we're doing ten just kidding we're doing five because we have a budget and we can't go over that budget they're all cheap so yeah what we're gonna be doing is going in and buying these uh keyboards because you know keyboards and we're gonna actually open them up review them back at the office but you know we want to give you some behind the scenes vlog footage of us actually going to look at that it's a best buy are we buying Pokemon? Is that what we're doing? No, we're buying NFTs. Buying NFTs. This guy's an NFT expert. So yeah, might as well go inside and see what they have. All right, Zach, so what is our top five? All right, you ready? What's the list? I'm looking it's at the it. Corsair K65. All right, so here's Corsair. Okay. And we're some keyboards. There's the K60. K60. <laughs> 55. 55. K65. That's hey, well, a mini though. Is, there, is that mini? what it is? I guess so. Yeah, Do we want the mini? It's a, yeah, it looks cool. Oh, it looks pretty yeah. dope. So we have uh, we have speed RGB linear switches, Cherry MX. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. What's next? Corsair K70. So this uh, is where like, you know, this is one right here. The normal. That one? All right. Yeah, Corsair. Expensive. So we can show them off, you know, we can figure out like if we want to get like five of the same brand or not. Next is the Razer Black Widow V3. Black Widow V3. Look at that. It's on sale. I want a 109. You want this, this one? Mine. This okay, my but I will say that they do have, well, it's okay. We'll, it works. We'll go with the main one. I was just going to say they do have the mini version that's a full size. But the but full size one is the best sound. It was best sound. You got to do it. Logitech G815. Logitech is not. It's right there. Ooh, that one's kind of sleek. Actually, I'm kind of digging that one. Dude, that one's huge. Oh my God, look at this is my new bet. <laughs> you want to hold that one? All right. <gasps> Are we missing HyperX one? Alloy Origins. They don't got it. Let's say have it back in the. Uh, that means we have to this one right here. All right, so we're we missing one for, of them. Uh, just a choice pick. Here, Zach. <laughs> so we. Um, Ooh, what, can we just go for like the we second? Go for a brand that didn't well, I mean, it doesn't have them in the store, so they might oh, have them go somewhere else. We don't ask about them. I got you covered. I think it looks clean. <laughs> is this the office TV? Five grand? How big is it? David, think about it. You pay for it. All right, guys, we are now back at the Toasty Bros headquarters with all five of these keyboards. And as you could see, we'll have some video of the actual price, but it ended up being like $594 and for tax and everything, pretty freaking expensive. Um, but each keyboard was basically an average of like a hundred bucks, maybe even a little bit more when you count tax. I think the cheapest one we got at this was like 86 bucks. So yeah, we got some pretty high end keyboards. That's why we're not really calling this, you know, top five under a certain amount. This is just best sellers, uh, both with Best Buy and honestly, on Amazon and Newegg even, some of these are number one sellers. So let's go ahead and dive into the first one that's right up here, that one, the K65. So the first keyboard we have right here is this Corsair K65 RGB Mini. We paid $89.99 from Best Buy for it. We actually have our wonderful crusty receipt right here. And um, yeah, Best Buy is kind of weird. It shows that we got like massive discounts and everything, but uh, when you look up the actual MSRP pricing, we basically just got MSRP and all this stuff. So this right here is a 65% keyboard. I think it's the only 65 we got. I it's think that's 60. A, that's yeah, simple. I think that's a TKL over there. Oh, it's it's a 60% but it's called the K65. 
I'll be damned. But basically, this is a Corsair keyboard. They're often using Cherry switches. I think that's all they use is MX Cherry switches. So they actually put the Speed Silvers in these. I think they're Speed Silvers. They just call them Speed RGB, linear and fast. Um, really cool space bar design, by the way, which I'm kind of kind of excited about that. Getting into the keyboard, we know that this is not gonna have our direction keys, it's not gonna have all of the function keys. You basically have to layer your keys, which means if I wanna do like, you know, F1, I'm gonna have to go function and then one. So that is one sucky part if you're considering getting like a 60, 65% keyboard, is you do lose a lot of the functionality, but if you're just a gamer, really these are great because they save a lot of space. And these switches, they feel really nice. They honestly just feel, they feel like a shorter travel red switch that have more resistance. Yeah, they're they're very quick. They go down to the bottom and bottom out really fast. They're a little bit stiffer. They sound really great. The frame is really nice. I mean, it's it's really like, it feels like a typical like Amazon keyboard though, where it's like a plastic frame. There's no feet. So it's kind of a one height fits all. You can't adjust it. It does use USB-C and it's disconnectable. Let's see what kind of cable we got. I'm going to assume it's braided because Corsair is really good about that. So yeah, we do have a braided cable. They actually included a normal space bar in case this one's too much for you. So we have a keycap puller, instruction manual. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic. There's really not a whole lot to it. So now we're just gonna go ahead and pull off a keycap real quick here, show you guys a switch. And look at that, we got our cherry linear right there. And uh, it's a pretty nice switch, like I said. I mean, I'm, I'm liking the silvers. I haven't really tried them out before. But I think we go ahead and actually hook it up, see what the RGB looks like, and then do a typing test. All right, guys, so we got the keyboard hooked up and it's overall pretty cool. One thing I'm liking out of the box is Corsair is usually really picky normally and they're like, hey, you gotta install our IQ software and this software and that software, but check it out, we press function. I can change like the brightness, I can change the modes and whatnot. There's actually like a mode button right there. I don't wanna click all these because I already found RGB and I'm in love, so I can't change it. But it looks pretty good to me, so I'm liking the lighting. Let's go ahead and get the lab onto the cord and then we'll do a typing test. All right, so after typing on this keyboard, and I'm gonna be honest, I think this is gonna be um, pretty much the same with all of these. Stabilizer's really good. I mean, the, as far as like the switches go, they feel lube, there's no scratchiness, there's no like rattling sounds or anything. They all feel really good, no mushiness. I think it's gonna feel like that for every single one because you gotta remember the cheapest keyboard in this roundup is $89.99. They go all the way up to 160 bucks, so. I'm liking this one though, and so far it's in first place because there's nothing else. Next up, we have another 60% board. This is the HyperX Allo Origin 60. It's in a petite form factor. Uh, double shot PBT, BBT, PPT, keycaps, can't really say that. And uh, yeah, RGB, red switches. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. Where'd the big knife go? Here it is. Guys, be safe with your knives. You don't want to cut yourself. It's a very bad thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. Um, I haven't used a HyperX keyboard before, but I've heard they're pretty good. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out and it's just a normal packaging. Got a, I think it's metal. That's pretty, that's pretty heavy dude. That's a weapon right there, ladies and gentlemen. Zombie um, apocalypse? Uh, usual USB-C cable. Um, and then you have a additional space bar, which is more fancy. We're putting that space bar on once we open things up, but nothing too crazy out of the box. But uh, yeah, this one feels well built, man. And this is the cheapest one in this Ooh, whole round. Okay, you just gotta just, just. Oh man, it has feet too. Just, just feel that. Hey, I get it. Oh, it has double feet where you can do double adjustment. Bro, you already claimed your keyboard. Uh, what are you doing? Is this yours now? I don't know, maybe. This one's actually pretty solid, really well built. Um, yeah, I got the red switches. I'll go ahead and pop off one of those keys real quick. Look at that. Red switches, I believe these are Cherry. They're actually HyperX. Oh, they're HyperX branded. Yeah, I forgot yeah. HyperX does their own switches. So these are HyperX linear switches, um, double shot keycaps. So they're pretty high quality and it has raised feet. That is something that the Corsair one does not have. And uh, a lot of people may like the angle adjustment for you to actually be able to, you know, have your wrist at a proper position. I don't even know if that's really proper. It's just more of a comfort thing. Um, USB-C plugs in right here. Those feet are right there. Very well secured. So it won't just slide around on your desk. Um, really the only thing we can do now is plug this thing up and see what that RGB looks like. Cause that's what I'm very excited to see. All right, so we replaced bright. the space bar. That's actually a cool looking space bar. I really like that. And the RGB is well, pretty nice. Let's see if we can figure out the modes here. Obviously everything's gonna be function and probably something like this. <laughs> These are just different modes, I guess. They're presets. Um, this is volume, so I just muted our computer over there and we adjusted oh. the volume up and down with function. Um, I don't see any other RGB control. It might be more software-based. I can see you can do the brightness up and down here. 
Um, but yeah, I don't see any other modes. So not a huge deal breaker if you're really not crazy for RGB and you're really just looking for a really well-built keyboard. But yeah, those just like look like presets. What? Yeah, so they're presets. So I'm assuming, um, I don't know what program HyperX uses, but they're gonna be probably very uh, program focused. So if you really wanna customize your keyboard, that's probably your best bet. But uh, yeah, this thing looks pretty promising. I'm gonna flip these feet up and then we're gonna, you know, do a typing test real quick. All right, so yeah, this is a really nice keyboard. I'm a big fan of the all aluminum body. Something about it just feels very premium. The only other time I felt a keyboard like this was from like IQNix. IQNix makes some really high quality keyboards, but you're looking at like $150, $200. At $79 with this aluminum, it's actually very premium. And uh, yeah, I think this is a really good option if you want something that's really premium, that's not super expensive. The next keyboard we have is the Corsair K70. This is kind of a legendary keyboard, if we're being honest here. I mean, it's kind of been around for quite some time. This is obviously like a revision of it though. This is the MK.2, so one I have not seen before. And I think this one was one of our more expensive ones. I realized that. I was wondering why you're looking over there. Yeah, that's and I was, what like, I was oh, glancing. I put the receipt away. Um, it is, is it was 109. It was 169 March, but there's a $60 <laughs> discount. $60 discount. So. I'm gonna guess this one's somewhere between like 110 and 130 on like Amazon and Newegg. And obviously we'll have links in the description down below for all these and there will be affiliate links. It looks like we end up getting Cherry MX reds? It doesn't even say, it just says Cherry MX. Oh, right. silvers. Oh, silvers. We got speed silvers again. So basically this is gonna be very similar key and typing wise. Um, and I'm assuming the body's probably still plastic, but it actually, the whole top's aluminum. Yeah, it only has like aluminum plate on it. That's normal case. Yeah, oh, this is a plus. Oh, wrist rest. You got that. I don't even know what this stuff. Oh, it comes with the uh, like the little textured keys. Mm -hmm. That's nice. a pretty common Corsair thing is they'll give you like the textured WSD keys so that you can uh, be a true gamer. And have some Gorilla Grip. That's kind of what these are marketed for. I mean, they're literally marketed for gamers, by gamers, from gamers, gamers. gamers. So opening this up, we have, first of all, we have a super thick USB cable. The reason being is this actually has USB pass-through on it, meaning you can hook your USB devices to it, kind of like a USB hub. I think we only have one pass-through though, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, one USB on the back. Port. I mean, but you can't complain. I mean, it's better than none, I guess. One thing I can think of is there's some people who don't want to run extra cable behind for their the, desk for their mouse, mouse that can yeah. run right there. That's a good point, but you know, more USB would be kind of cool. Yes. But anyways, this is cool because we actually have an encoder wheel right here that's for the volume, probably. An encoder wheel? Encoder? I was like, is that a word an I don't know? Encoder wheel? <laughs> I, rotary wheel? I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore, dude. Like, uh, anyways, it has feet on the back here. It feels like the back is all plastic. It's just this front plate is brushed aluminum. It looks like we have like a, a lighting switch right there. Um, because this is a full size keyboard. We're getting into some weird territory here. The space bar that they include actually is that texture that you're gonna get here with these guys. So I feel like it definitely makes sense to put these on. Let's go ahead and see what this wrist rest looks like. It is a hard wrist rest, which technically is supposed to be good. A lot of people don't know that, but um, that's supposed to be the more ergonomic solution. I'm not a fan of how this hooks up though. Not gonna it's lie. It's cheap looking. For it being like over $100, it magnets. looks good once it's on. It looks really good, but normally, yeah, magnets are kind of the way to go for more expensive keyboards. So let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up. We'll go ahead and pop the switch off for It you. looks just like the other ones. Yeah, it looks like the other silvers. Like I said, basically red switches with shorter travel, a little bit stiffer feeling. Ooh, okay, that's mm -hmm. bright. So that's, that's one thing you're gonna get with a big keyboard like this is you have more room for, you know, circuit board and all that stuff. So they definitely crammed in some very nice, bright, RGB lighting on it. Our encoder wheel works perfect. But yeah, I think we should just go ahead and do a typing test. All right, so now that we've typed on it, the one thing that, you know, we did notice that's slightly different is like the space bar. Definitely has a little bit more of like a ring to it, a little more of a tinny sound. And we think that's probably because we have this aluminum back plate and it's really spaced out. So there's a lot more reverberations that are allowed to go through aluminum than there is plastic. So overall though, it really does feel like just like the other Corsair keyboard, really good feeling. If you need a full size keyboard, this is 100% the way to go. And I think they have K70 like minis and 10 keyless and all that because it's such a popular keyboard. So you got lots of options. 
So this right here is the most expensive keyboard, I think. I don't know if the Razer one is more expensive. I don't think so. I don't think so. This one's $169, regularly $200, but we've kind of figured that on all retailers, you're gonna get about $169 or a little bit less. So we're gonna open this thing up. This is the Logitech, what is even the model? G815. Well, look at that, you got it. And this one actually has clicky switches. Yeah, it's clicky switches. They look like they're low profile switches too. So um, again, this is a popular keyboard. I know a lot of people who really stand by buying Logitech peripherals, like the mice. They make some good mice, but are their keyboards any good? Well, this presentation's pretty good. I kind of like this. Ooh, that's so cool looking. Ooh. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the keyboard out. Look at how thin these are. Those are really cool. Yeah, so do we actually have small switches or are they normal switches with uh, slim keycaps. They're, they're low oh, profile the switches. Heck? Yeah, so that looks just yeah, like a normal low, yeah, like it. a normal low profile switch. I'm assuming the, the the marketing that Logitech is going for with this is faster travel because they're physically shorter, um, so you get faster responses and stuff. But there really isn't anything else in the box. You just get that, and that's it. So definitely short travel. I mean, you. Look at that, actuated, actuated. Actuate, actuate. So I'm gonna put that down here. And uh, yeah, as we already showed, there is uh, the little low profile switch. It is a clicky switch. It's the Logitech in-brand switch. Um, and oh, it's a, no, it's a kale. Oh, it's kale? Yeah. Oh, kale makes some. Kale. Okay, interesting. Um, we also have these macros right here, which are pretty cool to have, uh, something we didn't have on the other keyboards. We have some media controls right here, pause, play, fast forward, rewind, and mute. Um, and then we also have a lighting button right here. I don't really like these buttons. I think McAllister would nut over like all these. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Yeah, these are, these are pretty cool. We got cool. M like different modes. Yeah, so I mean, software wise, there's gonna be a lot to configure with this one. Um, obviously, we're not a huge fan of software, so we're probably not gonna do all the configuration <laughs> for it, but I think that's probably a big selling point is having all the software to do whatever you want with this keyboard. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and plug it up and see what we got. A couple things I forgot to mention real quick, there are flip out feet on the back because this thing is really flat, but you have two different modes it looks like. You can do just four inch, low rider. I assume, or eight. We got low rider and high rider. Look at that, so you got that. Um, we're gonna go with the eight, obviously, because this thing is flat. So that, that's eight inches? I don't think it's inches. I think it is. Is that is that what eight inches looks like? I think so. Guys, I think that's I, wow. so, so I have eight inches. <laughs> um, all right. So what we have right here is this beautiful RGB that Jackson was easily able to change with. This that one. is convenient. That's brightness. So yeah. yeah, and then literally like it couldn't get more dumbed down. What is Mister? <laughs> <laughs> Mister? Is that like mode reset? Uh, I maybe know. I don't know. Maybe oh. it's like a. I bet you can change what each mode is. Master override or whatever. Yeah. Master. master reset. <laughs> yes, master reset, exactly. I don't know what this means. Oh, dude, it's a draw. Draw. <laughs> does, it look, does it look like a crayon? Not a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going off the rails. All right, so we're gonna leave that one alone. Here's that volume knob. Mm. But uh, yeah, RGB is pretty bright. I would expect that from a really expensive keyboard. Let's just hear what those clicky switches sound like. Well, if you could tell what I was trying to type, I'm typing on this keyboard and it's very hard to type on. You really can't even hear it. I really like the sound though. The sound was kind of like unique because it's supposed to be blue uh, clicky switches, but they they don't sound like blues. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's hard to type on though. It's one of those things where like, I probably get used to it if I switch to this as like my main keyboard, but um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I personally wouldn't pick it up, but I can see somebody wanting this because they were really like low profile or they just really like the look, but it's a good contender. Very expensive. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have, of course, a Razer keyboard. I mean, it had to be one of the top products. So we actually had one Razer keyboard, surprisingly. Uh, it seems like Corsair actually kind of held the market there, but this is the Razer Black Widow V3. And I know that we've had like the normal V1 a long time ago. I think we've seen a V2. I don't really know if we mess with the V3 a whole lot, but it is a full-size keyboard. It looks like it already has the volume wheel on it. I guess I could probably start opening it while I'm actually talking about it. But obviously, it's Razer. I mean, one thing you get about Razer is the unboxing experience. They always have these really nice looking green and black color scheme. But, you know, we got all of our warranty stuff up here. And yeah, they, they really do go all out with the presentation for sure. But obviously, you're not really worried about the box once you open it up. You're worried about the performance. You know, is it good? Is it bad? Now, one thing, this does not actually have a disconnectable <gasps> um, cable. I think, oh, did no. every other one we looked at have one? Um, I don't no, think the Logitech that didn't. didn't. Oh, that's really weird. Like, so two of our almost exp like most expensive keyboards don't have detachable cables, but the other ones did. K70 probably didn't either because it had the um, pass-through. I doubt it's detachable. 
That's a good point. Okay. Well, yeah, but I see it right so there. Just Look two at of it. our keyboards didn't have it. Look on. at it. It's I not... can't even complain. So it's basically it's mini keyboards. It's popular with miniature keyboards, like smaller ones, because I feel like we always see detachable, but with full size, they don't really do that. So we do have a braided cable, which has been pretty much the same with all these really nice braided cables. This one does not have USB pass through. It does have two different flip out feet. And once again, they actually do the same thing here with the, oh, it's degree. It's not. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I yeah. figured it was okay. in inches, but yeah. <laughs> After I said it, I knew it was wrong. Well, this one's nine inches. Oh, <laughs> we're just gonna run nine with inches. that. It's a meme now. But uh, no, this looks really good though. Once we actually get the, the feet flipped up and everything, it has a nice angle. It looks like, we have an aluminum back plate, but the rest of it's all plastic. And this might be plastic. It's really hard to tell. I mean, I, no, it's aluminum. Yeah, That's it's aluminum. aluminum. The whole rest of the body's plastic. Really nice wheel. And I, I like this. What clicks? I bet that's mute probably, but that sounds really nice. Oh. We got we got some blue switches essentially. Razer does make their own switches. They have their nice, basically like box style switches. And uh, it's basically just a blue switch. It sounds almost the exact same. It feels like it has the same, same travel. I mean, yeah, if, you did, if I didn't know any better and you just had me type, I'd say those are just blue switches. But let's go ahead and get it plugged in and see what we're working with. It does have this too. I gotta, oh, yeah. I can't, I can't not show that. And one thing I think they did, I'm not seeing any connection points. So I think it has magnets in it. But is it as cool as those other ones that have like RGB via magnets? Or does it just not? Not, not a fan of that. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, was, I was bragging about it, but I don't think it has magnets and has no way to actually like connect. I would end up just move, I move my keyboard around a lot. I don't know if you guys are the same, like when I'm playing games, I often adjust the angle and I would very quickly, yeah. Wait, I, there's I just, nothing, it's just. I just wouldn't even bother like using that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get it plugged in. I mean, we can't really hate too much on it because I know a lot of people buy wrist rest aftermarket and those don't typically attach with magnets or anything. I guess you could always use like adhesive or something if you were really picky about it. But I know it would drive me crazy because I move my keyboard way too much while I'm gaming. So it came purple. You would think that would have came like green, you know, like like, like razor color. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm really heavily thinking because I do remember razors. Razors very much like Corsair and I guess a little bit of Logitech where they have, you know, that really nice razor synopsis software. I really get the vibe that they really want you to use that software. Um, but obviously for the people out there who don't like softwares, um, this, this could be a little little risky for you. I didn't know what that you. was. Mainly because I remember a lot of people have problems with Razer um, synopsis doing the thing where it thinks you're cheating in games. So just keep that in mind. If you don't like having to deal with like um, softwares, maybe this might not be the keyboard for you, but let's go ahead and just do a typing test on it. Ladies and gentlemen, so I'm not gonna say this is like the worst keyboard ever because it's really not. It's not a bad keyboard, but for $110, I think it was, I'm not a fan of this one, I'm not gonna lie. I, there's other, there's some other Razer products that I really love. Like they have really good headphones, really good mice. We've checked out some of their keyboards, but not a lot. And I think they're always just kind of like, eh. But yeah, that, I mean, that space bar is just like absolutely, like the stabilizers are, I mean, look, look at the wobble <laughs> on it too. It's like death wobble on a keyboard. So I don't know, for 110 bucks, we have some roundups on our channel that are like 40 to $50, where I feel like we looked at keyboards that are just as good. They're not better, but they're just as good for half the price. So that's just something to keep in mind over this Razer keyboard. So now that we've checked out every single keyboard, let's go ahead and rank them and uh, go from there. All right, guys, so we just got done checking out all of the keyboards and we actually kind of did rate them from first to last. We really didn't go super in depth with that this time. We kind of just, you know, based on our first impressions, basically put them in a certain order. But as you can see here, we have the two short ones up front, which, you know, full size keyboards just don't really cut it for us anymore. If we had some TKLs, those would probably be up towards the front. But in all honesty, you guys know the razors in the back. That's when we had the most complaints about. It's still a good keyboard. It's just for the price, it's kind of eh. And this one right here is a decent keyboard as well. For someone who wants low profile switches, this is a really good option. But for somebody who really just wants a mechanical keyboard, doesn't care about low profile or anything, spending as much money as this thing is, considering it's the most expensive one, just doesn't seem like the best value. So that's why I kind of put these up front because they are, well, a very, different kind of keyboard that you really would want to have. It's not one that if you want a numpad or any of these other features that you can actually live without, but I think it's still a pretty good buy, especially for you gamers out there. So the links in the description down below will be affiliate links to all these keyboards at different sites or even your local Best Buy. And also don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.
And hey, all of these keyboards right here will actually be for sale at our PC selling business locally if you can come to Louisville, Kentucky, and they will be severely discounted. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, peripherals, and a bunch of other fun stuff. Come in person or buy stuff online, PCBros.tech. You know I'm gonna type it in right now. PCBros.tech, do that right now. See you guys later, goodbye. That's some WPM right there. Yeah, 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 yeah.